Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, as you can see, we're looking at a Kenwood today. But this is not a ham radio Kenwood unit. This is a commercial Kenwood unit. This is a Kenwood commercial UHF repeater. This is a, I believe, 35 watt uh, repeater designed for the commercial uh, band. The uh, model number is K TKR 820 N slash A. And uh, let's see specifications. Okay, frequency ranges. It covers from 820 KNM. Here we go. Uh, 450 to 470 megahertz, which is just above the uh, amateur uh, band. Uh, and I think it will also go down to 400 to 430, which is below the amateur band. So it does not cover the uh, UHF amateur band. It can be brute forced into the amateur band. I've done some research. That's quite complex. Um, inside behind this front panel, there's a, an EEPROM, which is an electronically uh, programmable read-only memory. You'd need an EEPROM burner, and uh, you'd have to change uh, eight bytes in the EEPROM to set the frequency. Then you could uh, uh, tune the uh, receiver pre-selector for sensitivity in the new frequency range, uh, various tweaks and tunings in the uh, transmit section. And the duplexer, you would need a service monitor to be precise enough to tune the duplexer uh, properly. So it would take quite a bit of expensive equipment and effort to uh, push this guy into the amateur band. Um, and it might be worth the effort if the unit was fully functional. This one, however, it does power up, but uh, it does not repeat. The carrier-operated squelch circuit is not working. When the squelch opens, you should see it go into transmit mode, and it's not doing it. I can force it into repeat, and it's only putting out about uh, 10 watts. So I figured, eh, you know what, I'm just going to... Uh, I'm just going to do a teardown video on this guy. Let's open it up. Let's see what's inside a Kenwood commercial unit. See how well it's built. I imagine it's going to be quite modular. Um, most of the commercial units are usually built to be easily field serviceable, which means they modularize them so you can replace the transmitter or the receiver or the power supply or the duplexer as a unit easily and quickly for fast field service. I bet that's how it's going to be built, and it's probably going to be built quite well. I have not had it open, so we're going to open this up together and see what's inside this uh, Kenwood commercial UHF repeater. Okay, so first to look at the outside. Um, front panel, minimal controls, volume control and squelch for the uh, receiver on the monitor. A repeat button to force it into repeat mode. A monitor button, which I presume uh, defeats the uh, carrier, uh, the, the tone, the PL tone and the squelch. And I'm not sure what takeover is unless it has to do with multiple units. Perhaps you can have more than one unit and tie them together and have one takeover so you can service the other one. I'm guessing. I'd have to look at the service manual or the user manual on that. The back panel. Ugh. Camera angle. Uh, we've got a transmitter antenna and a receiver antenna which I guess is optional because it's probably got a built-in duplexer, but this would be if you had no built-in duplexer and your duplexer was external. And this is a, an accessory or control connector, which looks like it was wired into something. Probably provides all the control that you would need to have an external uh, repeater controller. Um, and uh, yeah, who knows? I see some coaxial connections here, so it probably has audio in and out. Um, push to talk and uh, who knows what else. I'll have to look at the uh, diagram for that in the service manual and see what's on that connector. But let's open up the case and uh, see what she looks like inside. Wow! 
it looks like somebody might have already pushed this over to the amateur side. Huh. All right, let me reposition the camera. Now we're looking inside, and uh, I see a note here. Transmit 444.800, receive 449.800. So somebody's already um, done a little work on this. Uh, sense squelch trip. 0 0.09 microvolts since full squelch 0 0.31 microvolts so yeah, somebody's been doing a little work <laughs> january 23rd 2013 is what this note is dated so i don't know who wrote this note or what that's all about but uh here is the power transformer it's huge you can see my hand on top of it you can see how big that sucker is it's a linear power supply this is the power supply board back here um it looks like it's got uh yeah, there's one, two, that's transformer in, this is power out. So yeah, there's one main power lead coming out of it there. Uh, cap connection, yeah, okay. Yeah, it looks like it's just a 12-volt supply. Neat. I might, uh, I might strip this guy down for parts and make a nice bench supply out of that. I'm not sure what the current capacity of it is, but uh, cool. Um, over here, then, we've got the transmitter and the receiver in a modular design, as I expected. Underneath there, there is a gap where I guess the duplexer would go. This does not have a duplexer. Darn, I would like to have seen the duplexer. But uh, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's see how modular this is, how easy this is to take apart here. Okay, I had to take out screws here, screws there, and I discovered the entire... The transmitter and receiver are together. They're not separate... Well, they're separate modules, but they're mounted together. The entire RF deck comes out as one unit. We've got control cables across the front, BNC antenna connection. Let's unhook these. There we go. Now, there's going to be a power connection, too. Yep, there it is. There. Okay, there's power. Hmm. Cable guards. The cable guides. Ugh. There we are. And there. Okay. Well, like I said, they, they want to be field serviceable, so the entire RF assembly comes out as one module. Just a few screws. So you could replace the whole transmitter receiver section in one go. We'll put that aside for a moment. We'll open it up in a moment. And our chassis. We've got antenna connectors back here. These are kind of nice. These are a SO239 female on one side and BNC on the other side. Those are nice little adapters. And this control cable goes on up to the front panel. Now the front panel is all the uh, control electronics. I'm gonna have to take the bottom panel off I think to get to taking it apart. Let's do that next. Let's take a look at the front panel where all the electronics are and see what's going on there. Looks like these cables come through a massive rubber grommet. Probably have to guide these connectors through that hole. Yeah. Okay, well, let me, uh, let's see. There's not much to the chassis. Um, not much to the chassis at all. Oh, okay. I see what they did on the front panel. This is nice. We'll loosen that screw and loosen that screw and we'll take this screw out it's a hinged um, hinged assembly on the front panel oh that power supply is heavy that's what, all the weight is that big iron transformer in there there we are Got to reposition the camera again. As you can see, the front panel just uh, hinges forward for servicing. And then we've got a nice little speaker here, 8 ohms. And uh, two boards. One board is the switches and the microphone input jack down here. And the other board has these controls on it and the uh, digital electronics that control the repeater. Everything is interconnected with 
these nice little removable connectors. There's a wire that's cut there. Yeah, somebody hacked that. I wonder why. And it looks like this has been cut and patched and modified already. Let's uh, let's pull this board and uh, see what she looks like. Yeah, to modify this for the amateur band, you got to reburn an EEPROM, which is on this board. So you'd have to do a little bit of disassembly to get to that point. Okay, I took the nuts off on those two uh, potentiometers, and now the control board just slips right out. Uh, apparently, the information that I had found on the internet about programming an EEPROM is inaccurate, because I do not see a socketed EEPROM. Hmm. Okay, let's move this aside and let's take a look at the uh, transmitter and receiver. Alrighty, here we are inside the uh, RF modules. Receiver board, transmitter board, and this is the uh, power amplifier here, modular. Uh, our power inputs, so, uh, and our coaxial input for the uh, input signal. So, this by itself, it looks like I can take out four screws here and here and separate the receiver from the transmitter. And I've got a nice UHF 440 uh, range power amplifier. I might look at that. Maybe I can adjust that. There is an adjustment for power output. So perhaps uh, this would make a nice 440 amplifier for an actual, um, uh, well, for an ha a ham station. So I'll probably put this on the shelf and mark it accordingly and, uh, and keep that for future use. Flipping it over, big open space here. This is probably where the duplexer would go. Um, either here or underneath this module in the chassis. I don't know. I wish this one had a duplexer. I would like to have seen that. I think that would have been very interesting to look at. Um, here is the EEPROM. Okay, so the information I got off the internet was correct. This is the EEPROM that you'd have to reprogram in order for this thing to be pushed into the amateur range and set the frequencies. Um, kind of an involved process, requires a, a little bit of uh, hexadecimal math <laughs> um, and changing uh, eight bytes in that EEPROM. And then we've got some control cables here, and underneath this little panel will be the receiver board. So let's uh, let's pull this panel up and take a look at the receiver board underneath it. Okay, this little chip that's sticking in this foam that somebody stored over here would go there. This is the PL encoder. So this repeater is operating without PL tones right now. I think that the reason that they pull that is because this has to be programmed with the PL tone sets for amateur use. Um, we use different tone segments than the uh, commercial repeaters use, and uh, I don't think it has the amateur uh, repeater segments in there, or tone segments in there. Hmm. Well, I don't think I'm going to worry about repairing this guy. I think I'm just going to turn him into a parts donor, donor for the bench and uh, see what useful things I can get out of him. It's uh, a very commonly available repeater. There's tons of them on the surplus market, especially now since... Uh, the commercial utilities are all going to uh, uh, digital repeaters, digital technology. So these guys are now uh, defunct. There we go. And there's our receiver. Nice. Nicely laid out. Look at these nice big metal uh isolation areas to keep things isolated from each other. Yeah, I figured it would be very well built. It's a, it's a solid, solid chassis here. Solid. So that's, uh, that's what's inside the RF section. Looks like it would be fairly easily serviceable. Everything is connected with, uh, with plugs that just pop out. So you could very easily replace this module if you needed to. Uh, unplug these interconnects and coaxes and a few screws and the whole receiver board comes right off. Same thing with the power amplifier. Everything is connected. 
with the exception of the coax for the uh, RF output from the transmitter which is soldered so you would have to desolder that to replace the uh, power amplifier board because that BNC is not going to fit through this tiny hole <laughs> well maybe you know that's a big hole maybe the BNC would fit through there so yeah very serviceable design very easy to uh, remove and put things together so that is a look at the uh, Kenwood TKR820 UHF commercial repeater. I think I'm going to do another video where I disassemble that power supply and reassemble it into its own little metal chassis and make myself a bench supply out of it. So there you go, the Kenwood uh, repeater. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.